All right, hey guys, um, welcome to this brief. My name is Staff Sergeant Mitchell. Most of you guys should know me by now. If you don't, see me afterwards so you can get to know me. Um, but I am your guys' instructor, so technically you guys all already know me. Today we're gonna be going over team strategies to enhance performance and patient safety, or in short, team steps. Go ahead. All right, so the purpose and scope. So before you guys even read this slide, I want your attention real quick. Think about this. So think about who has kids in here. Raise your hand. Outstanding. So think about either your kids or your spouses, right? And you bring them to the hospital. And for whatever reason, there was an error in the patient care. And now they're either sicker, hospitalized, versus just an ER entry, right? Like a beginning entry. Now they're either hospitalized or even sicker than they were before. How would that make you feel? Is what I want you kind of thinking. All right, with the team steps. What we're trying to avoid is the error. So according to the Joint Commission, over 65% of unexpected occurrences involving death or serious physical or psychological injuries were due to inadequate communication and teamwork. And that's why Team Steps was developed. All right, so there's four learnable skills which we're gonna specifically touch today in this briefing. Um, those skills are communication, leadership, situation monitoring, and mutual support. Those are all learnable skills. We may not have every single one of them, but they're all learnable. Once you learn them, you become better patient, a better patient care team overall. Go ahead. All right, so if you understand this triangle, you understand team steps, okay? So let me just go over it real quick. The learnable skills that I was talking about that I mentioned are leadership, situation monitoring, mutual support, and communication. The patient care team, can learn these learnable skills and perform better, have better attitudes, and better knowledge overall. All right, so in the knowledge aspect of the framework, we have a shared mental model, and we'll get, we'll get deeper into that. Basically, it's when we're all thinking alike. We're all on the same page. Attitudes, obviously, if we're all working together, we're all, we've all learned how to work be better, then we're gonna have that mutual trust, right, within the group, within the team. It's going to create a better team orientation. That's within the attitudes. Your performance is going to improve, all right? Through adaptabil adaptability, accuracy, productivity, efficiency, and safety, all right? What we're trying to create here is the better team and the overall patient safety. Go ahead. All right, so the first learnable skill is communication. And the main areas that we want to think about when we communicate is whether that information was complete, clear, brief, and timely. By complete is when I'm relating information about a patient, I only want to know about that patient. Don't like go on and start telling me about a related incident or about your family members or something like that because now you might be getting off topic and I might lose some of that information that needs to be complete. Okay. The next one is clear. It must be understood. And I must, as the receiver, understand it. And you, as the giver of the information, should know what you're talking about. So that information should be clear and I should be seeing that like head nod to like, hey, yeah, I understand what you're trying to tell me or I understand what's going on with the patient. All right, and then it must be brief because if you continue to go on and on and on about this patient, I might lose you or I might just shut down and start thinking about something else, right? And so now when I go relay this information to one of my technologists, one of my nurses or one of my docs, he may not get all that information, okay? The last thing is timely. You want to verify correctness, and that kind of goes back to that clear and complete. They kind of all work intertwined. They all kind of work together. And then the knowledge of the information. If you don't know this knowledge, if you don't know the information, then go find out because you're going to give it to somebody else to follow along with that patient. All right, again, we're trying to avoid patient errors. Go ahead. All right, so one of the tools in that first aspect of communication is SBAR. We should all have these on our badges. Okay, we should all have these on our badges. Um, they were probably given to you when you first got oriented to the hospital, all right? And basically, it's the framework behind communication. SBAR, the S stands for situation, B for background, A assessment, and then R, what's my request or my recommendation? What should we do now? All right, so basically, situation could be something as simple as, uh, we'll take GI Joe, right? GI Joe has a swollen ankle, all right? It could be that basic. Background, what is the clinical background? He was just at the ER, all right? He got his, his, uh, his vitals, he's good, um, blood pressure's good, everything looks fine, except he's got a swollen ankle, right? 
poss possibly broken. So assessment, what is the problem? It's possibly broken, it's purple, he can't stand on it, he can't put any weight bearing on it, all right? So now request recommendation, what do I recommend as a nurse coming from the ER with my patient next to me in a wheelchair, what do I request you guys as my, as my uh, x-ray techs to do? So I'm recommending you guys please take an x-ray that's possibly broken, it's tender on the lateral or medial side of the ankle. Does that make sense? All right, go ahead. All right, which brings us into the next learnable skill, leadership. All right, so with leadership, it basically comes down to the team and who's leading this team, all right? Um, me as a leader, let's say you guys are all under me, then I want to relate that information that you guys are going to use and be effective as techs, if that makes sense, okay? So you're going to make, basically as, as that leadership team, you want to make decisions through collected input of you guys as well, though. And we'll go into... Um, some of the briefs, huddles, and debriefs. All right, my job as a leader as well is conflict resolution. So if you guys run into a problem that you guys can't solve at that lower level, then obviously you want to take it up to your leadership so that I can solve as a leader. Does that make sense? And that's only stuff that can't be handled at that lower level. All right, so basically my other job is to empower you guys to do a good job, to go and help that patient, to make sure that that patient is receiving the best possible care. Does that make sense? All right, so go ahead. Briefs. So I touched on briefs. A brief is no more than three to five minutes long, okay? It's a real quick brief normally done at the beginning of the day, all right? And this is just like, hey, we have this many rooms available. These ones, for whatever reason, are not working. Um, this is how many patients we have out on our waiting room right now. This is what's going on with each one of them, all right? It's a really quick brief. It's the beginning of the day type brief where like, uh, the schedule that we have outside the rooms, right? Like, hey, uh, you're assigned to room one to take care of patients. You're assigned to the floor room. You are assigned to the OR portables, okay? So go ahead, go to the next. The huddle, the huddle is the touch base. So this is done at any time of the day, all right? Just like a huddle in football, right? After a play, you come on in and you say, hey, this is what's going on, this is what we're gonna do next because that other play didn't work. You do this throughout the day. It can happen at any time of the day. It can be as quick as 30 seconds, or as long as five minutes if you need it to. But a huddle is done to touch base, all right, to make things better. If, for example, I saw that there was wires in one of our x-ray rooms that a patient could trip over or a stool that was kind of just left there, I can say to myself, hey, that needs to be changed, right? And then go to my team members and say, hey, there's a stool that's sitting right in the middle. You might want to move that for the next patient because they might trip over and we cause an accident, okay? So go ahead, next. A debrief. A debrief is like an AAR in the Army, right, an after actions review. For a debrief, you want to do those at the end of the day. So the end of the day comes, there's a new shift coming in, you want to now debrief the members of the first shift saying like, hey, this is what went well, this is what we can improve on, and this is what we can maintain. This is how we maintain it. Now that new group comes in and say, hey, we still have this many patients outside, this is what's going on with this A, B, C, and D. All right, so now they're aware and they can do that initial briefing for their first part of their, of their brief, for their first, shop, first part of their shift. All right, go ahead, next. Situation monitoring. That's the next learnable skill, all right, of the team. So situation monitoring can bring us back to wires on the floor or a stool in the middle of our patient area, all right? So patient or situation monitoring is that individual skill of that initial tech that saw that or that nurse that's, that saw the situation. Situation monitoring is what I see and tell myself, all right? The outcome is situation awareness. So like, yeah, I noticed that, obviously I'm aware. I'm aware of my surroundings, right? When I go and I share that with you guys, it's the team outcome because you've created a shared mental model. And I'll explain that a little more on my next slide. All right, so basically, we're scanning behaviors, right, as the individual outcome and individual awareness, right? So it helps maintain accurate situation awareness. Basically, it's a way of watching each other's back, right? So if I notice that that chair is in the middle of the room, it can cause a patient to trip over it or whatnot, I'm aware of it now. I share it with you guys, right? We're watching each other's back, right? Because I may not be doing that other patient. Somebody else might. If that patient falls, whose fault is it? Is it the patient that saw it, or excuse me, the tech that saw it, or the new tech who's now using that room? Right, it can go either way. 
But if we work as a team, it's going to be a better outcome. We're going to move it out of the way. We've shared that mental model of safety. Does that make sense? Go ahead, go to my next slide. It's kind of like this picture, right? So let's say we're all, what are these up here? Penguins. Penguins, right? Let's say we're all penguins. They're thinking fish. They're all on the same page. They're thinking fish, right? If I'm thinking stool in the middle of the room or wires in the middle of the room, I'm thinking patient care or patient safety, and I relate that to you guys. You guys are all on the same page and thinking stool or wires or patient safety. Does that make sense? Yes. They're all on the same page. They're sharing a mental model. Go ahead, next. All right, so our last learnable skill of the four is mutual support. All right, by, by, once we create that mutual, uh, excuse me, once we, once we create that shared mental model, we've become a better team, right? And that's what mutual support is about. It's team members foster a climate in which it is expected that assistance will be actively sought, right? So basically, I don't have to worry that I might mess up because I have somebody watching my back, all right? So overall, we're creating better team, better team, overall. We're creating a way better team. All right, go ahead, go to my next slide. It's all about effective feedback. So let's say I see that somebody is not washing their hands before they do their patient or even after they do a patient. Or maybe they're not getting the room ready and that stool is still in the middle of the room, right? Let's say one of your leaders notices it or one of your battle buddies, one of your teammates, right? What you wanna do is you wanna give feedback on like what can possibly happen. You want that feedback to be timely. All right, so you want, more than likely, you don't want to wait till after they do the patient because something could have happened. You want to wait, you want to go ahead and do it as soon as you see it, like before it happens, right? So you're doing it in a timely manner. Once you see it, go ahead and approach that person and say, hey, you know, this is what I see. This is the potential of it. It can lead to some, to some issues. Let's fix it, right? And how do we want to do it? We want to do it respectfully. You don't want to be up there and like, because they might shut down. Does that make sense? So if I go up to you when you're about to work on a patient and I'm like yelling at you because you might have caused an accident, you're gonna shut down. You're gonna, the body posture is just automatically gonna change. That communication is not gonna be there. That shared mental model is not gonna be there, okay? So then you wanna be specific. So you wanna say, hey, I see that there's a stool there in the middle. It's probably a better idea before you bring the patient, let's just go ahead and move it so that uh, we don't cause any accidents, right? Um, so just be specific because you don't want to be like, hey, I noticed that there was a stool in one of the rooms. Um, we might, we might want to move it. Now we're looking around or not even caring because now this department is huge. Right now we're looking everywhere for this stool if we even care. Right? So you want to be very specific to which room, especially if you're about to go use it. And then direct it. It's got to be directed toward improvement, obviously. Right? What's our final goal here? Patient care and a better team. Right? So patient safety, better team. That stool, let's go ahead and move it out of the way. It's going to improve the organization. It's going to improve our department. It's going to improve our, our team overall. All right? So basically, that bullet right there is the big one. It helps prevent the same problem from occurring in the future. All right? So now, we're all sharing that same mental model. We're all on the same page. We have that mutual support. Next time, that stool probably won't be in the middle of the room. Right? Because we're all kind of thinking like, hey, this is going to create a problem. Before it's or after you're done using that stool that you that you had in the middle of the room, you're automatically going to go ahead and move it. We're all on the same page. All right. Feedback is where the learning occurs, and this is all learning experience, you guys. Go ahead, go to my next page. All right. So the main points that we discussed were the four learnable skills. All right. Communication, leadership, situation monitoring, and mutual support. Those are the learnable skills. If we all learn those skills, become better at them. It, be, it makes a better patient care team, which improves our performance, our attitudes, and our knowledge. Is there any questions next time? Nothing? Nothing at all. Outstanding. If you guys do have questions, go to my next slide, or want to know where I reference this stuff, it's right there on the page, or feel free to come up to me afterwards and ask me.